And Dick Powell have designs on your loo. These are men with a mission, to seek out the ugly, the inefficient, and change it. Richard Seymour and Dick Powell are two of Britain's top designers. With their award-winning designs, they've transformed products from motorbikes to kettles to cell phones. They're now about to tackle something much more fundamental. This is a lavatory. Some of you know it as the loo, or the penny house, the place where you powder your nose, the toilet, the WC. All right then, this is a lavatory. We all know what we're talking about. Since it was introduced over 200 years ago, the basic design of the toilet has not changed. Richard and Dick are convinced it's time for a radical rethink. Has that been designed for comfort? for crapping. The thing I hate, oh, that is a classic problem. <laughs> I hate that one. I hate that one. Yeah. I hate all of this in here. It's all tough to clean, isn't it? Yeah. Also, well, the architecture of the whole damn thing. It's, nothing seems to have happened since the year doctors it. You've got this thing connected to this thing. It doesn't even look comfortable. I mean, obviously, it's a pretty traditional layout, but uh, does it have to be so bloody difficult to clean? Not just on the inside, but all the way around the outside, all this stuff out the back. Here's something that's designed for people to sit on. Yeah. But blokes come to it, you know, and they... How do you wee into it? You know, you've got the whole problem <laughs> of... <laughs> you've got the whole problem of, uh, of aim, and <coughs> it, the inevitable consequence of that is all of this stuff gets spattered. Yeah. I mean, this would defeat William Tell, let alone the average pissed Yorkshireman. <laughs> For Richard and Dick, good design is about making things desirable by making them better. They believe we deserve a better loo, and they're about to get the chance to make it happen. The, the loo is one of the last great challenges. It's one of the hardest things there is to design. The, the things you need to take into account, how it functions, how it flushes, how it sells, how it uses it, all of those things make it impossible. And a designer likes nothing more than to be told it can't be done. Remember, there's no law that says our lavatories have to be 200 years out of date. Goodbye. Shires is a traditional northern family firm. They've been in the sanitary wear business since 1939 and are one of the top three toilet manufacturers in Britain, with a turnover of £50 million. Now they want to design a new toilet, and they've asked Richard and Dick to help. It was delayed. Charles Kiriakou, the marketing manager of Shires, is the person in charge of developing the new loo. He wants it to be innovative and different, and he's hoping that Richard and Dick can bring a fresh perspective to the problem. They're looking at it and they're going, well, it, it all feels much the same, you know. What's, what makes this? At the moment, Shires bathroom suites are middle to bottom end of the market. The rosette, Medley, Nyad and Firenze. But they want to move up market, and to do that they need to come up with something very different. You've got the brand. Well, the brand, brand, is the brand that men you know, can, women you, don't. I'd like to show you two suites which okay. we, we launched in July this year. This is the cross suite, this is the Abbey suite. It's got a very much a country feel, mm. country romantic type sector of the, of the market. A romantic type. Little upstand. A very cute basin, very feminine as well, lots of shape and lots of design. I mean, that, that that's, uh, Charles, it helps business a little bit. You keep saying lots of design. What's in your head when you're saying design? Well, we're talking about sort of the inside of this basin. If you, if you can see, it's not just a conventional 
rounded basin. You've got these ribs coming in there. The ribs are reflected on the outside of the basin. It's not just a straightforward upstand. Isn't that a fundamental dichotomy, though, that the more fuss and detail you put into it, the more difficult it looks to clean and look after? There are certain nooks and crannies that we do try and avoid. Yeah. You're quite right. Explain to me again about this differential drying rate. Inside, you're drying at a slower rate than the outside. Richard and Dick's first step is to see how shires will manufacture the new toilet. Yourselves, that you're consulted early enough in the design process? We have a, an input, and the issue is, can we make it at the price that they're going to sell it? Really, that's what it comes to. Right. Alex Gemmel has been in the sanitary wear business for 40 years. He's Shire's director in charge of manufacturing. Every toilet manufactured today still performs exactly the same Herculean task it always has done, shifting hundreds of gallons of water and waste every week. And toilets are still made in the Victorian way too. 15 kilos of St. Austell clay poured into a mould, dried to a tough ceramic, glazed and then fired. It's a labour-intensive craft, more dependent on the potter's art than manufacturing science. And part of the art is knowing just how the clay will shrink and distort in the 1200 degree heat of the kilns. And after that, every toilet has to pass the exacting British standard flushing test. British B S ball, a British standard ball, that's a certain diameter weight, that's a laid down standard. So this is a simulated stoop. Like it's a jolly. Yeah, it's got a bit of How many balls can it take? That has to pass up test four times out of five. But how many balls at a time? No, only one. Just the one? Just the one day as well. Very small ball. Uh, the other thing is I think that a consumer watching us do this would think, that's nothing like the real thing. Well, that, that is the BS test. But, but that, I mean, don't you agree? They, they don't often arrive looking like that, do they? Well, I must agree with that, yeah. I bet that oh, costs a fortune, still, doesn't it? Because it's the still, specification. This is, this is yeah. a stool dummy, like you're getting car tests. Well, the this is Paul Williams, our designer. Hi, Paul. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Paul Williams is Shire's one-man design department, working directly to Charles. Great. This is a critical project for Shire's. The new toilet is their most important development for five years. They're investing a quarter of a million pounds in it. What's more, Charles is committed to launching it in just a year's time. He already has a detailed design spec. The market modern classic suite with a hint of revival uh, a, a little bit of hybrid not totally modern but uh, there has to be that little sort of classical style okay can so i ask paul, uh, paul a question do, do you agree paul with what the statement charles has made about modern classic with a revival i know he's your boss so yeah. you have to be oh, no, it's, 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 it's something that's really strong this traditional feel in the bathrooms so what do you i think a good example is, is this, I think this is... You don't want it to be overtly modern? You, no. You, no. But it yeah, doesn't mean to say it has to have a hint of revival, though, does it? Maybe oh, we're, it does. we're just talking I, about... I, 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 think, I think we're really talking about the same thing here. I mean, it, well, I hope got so. The point I'd like to make is I'm a bit disappointed, oh, actually. Yeah. I'm a bit disappointed because it doesn't seem to be ambitious in any way. Not in any way. It's still within the constraints of what you know is completely possible. <clears throat> but what we should be doing, in my opinion, is that we should be swinging towards benefits, not features. You sell them as features if you want, but that we have to improve the breed. Mm -hmm. The bog's got to be better. The bath has got to be better. There's no reason why you can't have something to go, wow, that is absolutely lovely, which is actually what you yes. want, and then go, and it is worth a thousand quid. In fact, it's worth more than a thousand quid. Head turn is of no use. Putting a sweet no, no, head turn and, and then that I can sell on it and is I can no, get a thousand quid. This is a commercially realistic brief. Yeah. I want a stunning suite which is going to sell. Thank you. Can I write this down? You here? can do. Right. That's not what I it would like. <laughs> to sell. Richard and 
Dick explore the toilet market in a bathroom showroom in London. But despite variations in sky length... God, it, look, it's the suite from hell, Mummy. <laughs> What's going on here? And this is the Brussels Sprout suite. Yeah. There's nothing here that is fundamentally different. Richard and Dick are convinced that the key to a successful loo is a better loo. But will they be able to persuade Shires? Do we understand what they've asked us to do? And do we agree with it? We understand what they've asked us to do, mm -hmm. and we don't agree with it. What's the statement here? The modern classic suite with a hint of revival. Right. Well, I think a lot of this is bound up. Is there seems to be a confusion between what Charles calls design and what we call design. There's that great thing about loads of design. Yeah, he didn't say loads of design, he said I, I, lots, of design, lots of design. Lots of design, yeah. yeah. Where, where more design is more de decoration, more curlicues and, you know, more features. He used the word features quite a lot at the expense of benefits. And we didn't see many benefits. I must say, I like the idea of a, a kind of super clean, I don't know what it would be like, but where the, where the dimension at the bottom is actually narrower than the bog. You get this sort of very modern, slightly poised look to the whole thing. It's just like a Macintosh chair, you know, sort of. I think there's lots of opportunities in the flush side. One thing we could do is maybe put the flush through the seat. Through the seat, yeah. So that the water comes through, and we could then That's very, very effectively organise the spray so that we can make it do whatever we want. We could give a sort of swirly, coander effect sort of thing, or we yeah. could direct the jets. The only problem with that is... Blokes lifting the seat again. Blokes lifting the seat and hosing their trousers yeah, down. Yeah. You could bring it through the hinge into the seat. Yeah. And all you'd need is a valve, just like a standard gas tap valve, so that mm. when the seat was up, no water would come through it, but when it was down, it would. Is there anything in that? Sprung the seat? That'd be great fun with a rubber duck. <laughs> <laughs> you press a, press a pedal with your foot, wallop the seat comes but, up. a pedal? A pedal for the A pedal? Flight. What about a pedal for the flush? Just, just, just mm. the, the, the sort of coatings and, you know... Now, all the kitchenware is non-stick. It's been like that for bloody years. So you're thinking non-shit stick, non-stick, non yeah, non-shit stick. But if you... PTFE coatings or something PTFE like that. is a possibility. I don't know if it's up to the job, but... I mean, the idea of having a loo that was a stay-clean loo, for right. instance... Sorry, I'll write it down a second. Has so. got to be... Has got to be... It's got what about, you know, the seat men versus women issue? Yes, the loo seems to have been designed specifically for sitting on. One other thing, I mean, obviously when a guy gets up, <coughs> standing up, he's going to have a wee, he's got to aim at what's effectively this condensed ellipse there. Couldn't we come up slightly yeah. at the back here, like that? So we're not producing a urinal as such. Something like that. That's good. That's good. That's good. I think. For Richard and Dick, the design of any product starts with how people use it. Fortunately for toilet behaviour, there is one seminal reference work. It contains detailed measurements of every aspect of urination and defecation. The author of this study and acknowledged world expert on the subject is Professor Alexander Kira. He's very critical of conventional toilet design, especially for men man has got to make a very difficult choice. <coughs> Do you sit back so that you avoid touching the front of the bowl with your penis and then take the risk of soiling the whole back of the bowl? Or do you move forward to avoid that and now you've got a problem with the penis? Professor Kira has studied the toilet habits of hundreds of volunteers over the past 40 years. His modified squat posture gives more effective evacuation and can be achieved on a conventional loo. But for him, the main design floor of the toilet is splashback. Current toilet bowls create a conical pattern of splash depending on the force of the stream and the angle of the surfaces. And men themselves make it worse. Many, many men don't want to be heard when they're urinating. And so that causes a problem because then you try to aim for not the water but the side or the back or something and of course that's a bit iffy because do you really make it or you end up missing it somehow 
mean, there are improvements that can be made without very much trouble, and I think should be made without very much trouble. But although his work has been publicly available for 30 years, no manufacturer has yet taken it into account. So one of the things that we've been interested in doing is if you take this as a relatively standard bowl, it's, it's configured for sitting on rather than for a man to pee in it. We tried to raise up the back of the pan here so that mm -hmm. we provide a bigger target area for people to pee into. Mm -hmm. okay, so it's a kind of combination urinal loop. It could work very well. That's part of what I proposed originally, too. Right. Not only that, but it's a matter of which way is it working. Because what you don't want to do is to be peeing against the oh, slope. Sure. You want to splash back. Exactly. develop the best of their ideas. A loo with men in mind. An easy clean coating. And a more accurate and effective flush. Shires make of it. Charles, Paul and the manufacturing team are about to hear the ideas for the first time. You're talking about technical innovations here. The no, I'm talking about consumer understanding. Okay. The, the self-cleaning toilet and the self-cleaning basin. Yeah, there's possibilities. We could design products with, with that sort of... Uh, Why don't uh, with that sort of... Uh, I don't think people are prepared to pay for it. No, 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 let no, 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 no. Hang on a minute. You don't know what it costs yet to make a lavatory that nothing sticks to, because you haven't tried it. Do, do you know of a non-stick material we can, uh, we can use for <laughs> I know. toilets? We know of one non-stick material. We don't know whether it's suitable for toilets yet, but hang on a sec. What we're talking about is start with a consumer need, yeah, and then draw the technology towards you. There's a lot of uh, nasic saving original stuff there. For example, the flushing lids. Now that is, a, that is a, an original system, uh, totally new, and it needs a long time to develop it. Mm -hmm. And I don't realistically <coughs> see it happening for this particular, this particular exercise. Really? It means a totally different uh, design of closet. The time scale we've got. Our backs are really against the world from day one. We know they are. And, and we've got to try and stick with a lot of proven practices. Uh, there's things there that are very exciting, but they're going to take a long time to develop. The other area is the closet tight urinal. That's a lovely idea, that. It's, again, something that we couldn't do immediately. Mm -hmm. It would be, it'd be a totally different thing. But what you're saying is, we can't do it because we haven't got the horsepower. But we love the idea. What I'm saying is, you can do it. You can do it, but you need additional horsepower to do it. Yeah? You've got finite results. Yeah? But this ain't rocket science, is it? Not really. As a designer, if somebody says to me, this can't be done, it pisses me right off. And the very first thing I then think about is why. Um, I absolutely don't concede that things like the male-female loo concept is something that you just cannot do in this amount of time. That's what design is about. It's about confronting an obstacle and finding a way through it, around it, over the top of it. And so that is a challenge. So the best thing those guys could have actually done was to have sat in a meeting and said, well, we don't think it's possible, because that is lighting the blue touch paper. If there's anything new in toilet technology, it'll be here, in Japan. 
Richard and Dick have come to see if there are developments which could be useful for their mission to fundamentally improve the toilet and to persuade Shires to take a more radical approach. You should always think of a designer as a radar scanner. He's someone who's going around all the time soaking up different cultures, different products, different things. And in our trips to Japan in the past, we've noticed that it's radically different here and different things happen. We should expect to see very different things. Gay photo. <laughs> the Japanese are renowned for their love of high-tech electronics, and their toilets are no exception. It's incredible that you find these things in a sort of hi-fi shop. Toilets here have more electronic features than a top-of-the-range limo. Automatic lids, built-in deodorizers, and heated seats. They have electronic noise machines to mask any embarrassing sounds, with a warning light to show how much longer you've got. There is continual innovation. Toilets that wash and blow-dry you after use, and even ones that have a built-in pulsing action for massage. <laughs> What's the main purpose of the massage? Was that an indiscreet well, question? So. No, um, people who have difficulty, um, constipation. Uh, oh, really? Oh, right. Yeah, it sort of it stimulates simulates. evacuation. Oh, ah. I, uh, one of the reasons why also it became so popular in Japan was that um, quite a lot of Japanese uh, have hemorrhoid. Already in Japan, 40% of the whole Japanese... Really? 40% of the population have, have hemorrhoids? Have washlets. Oh, washlets. Washlets, the bad Washlets, the bad luck, isn't it? Fantastic. This is a toilet that warms your bottom, washes your bottom, massages your bottom, dries your bottom, takes the smells away. Keeps the room warm. Oh, keeps the room warm. So all we need now is a toilet that goes to the toilet for you. <laughs> done. There's a Lamborghini Diablo of a toilet. <laughs> Can I do anything else? This ultimate toilet was developed by the world's largest toilet manufacturer, Toto. 2,000 kilometers south of Tokyo in Fukuoka is Toto's research department. It's here that new ideas are developed and tested. It's, so what is this? Yes. It's testing material made, uh, made of the soybeans right. with uh, polystyrene. Polystyrene? Polystyrene, yes, polystyrene. This is the stuff you make miso soup out of? Yes. Right. <laughs> and the, why do you have the polystyrene to make a buoyancy? Yes, yes. Right. I just, I just, I just, uh, floating. Float, float. yeah. Floating, okay. okay. That's really good, yeah. Mm. So, okay. Very yes. realistic. Yeah. <laughs> Great job. You've done that before. <laughs> and then you put some paper? Yes. Good God. It's a meal and a half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did it. Now, that's what I call a test. So this is where we're going to see the, the test, the demonstration. And among the innovations in Toto's laboratories is one that Richard and Dick are delighted to find. It's being field tested in the employee washroom. A microbiological coating on the ceramic which kills bacteria and loosens waste so it flushes away without staining. It's very clean. <laughs> you can see how clean So this is a, this is a, a paint finish? On the surface there's a coating on the 
above the glaze. On top of the glaze, so it's oh, yeah. the top so surface. Okay. And, uh, and okay, so if we compare it with the the one that hasn't. <laughs> Enzymes in the coating digest bacteria and leave the surface slippery so that it doesn't stain. There'll be no stickness. Okay. Okay. How long does the, the how long long does it last? How long will it stay on the surface? Forever? Forever. Yes. Wow. Sounds like a fantastic invention. The best thing that we can bring back to Shires is how we know they respond already is somebody out there is already doing it. That's part of the Shires dynamic to, to date is seeing, the, getting the confidence from knowing that somebody else is doing it. Now, I think Dick and I would find it extraordinary if Shires didn't actually know I can't believe they that don't this is know. going on. I mean, if they don't know, they should be shot. Because it's their business to know about what's happening in their own industry. So, and it's been out there for several years. Let's find out. Yeah. To our delight and amazement while we were out in Japan, we found the biggest manufacturer going gung-ho on surface coatings that actually do the job. Photocatalytic materials, bactericidal coatings that work forever and do the job. But it just goes to prove that if you start by the thought and then you go hunting for the technology, you know, you Did may you see find... whether, I mean, does it actually just kill the germs or does it actually stop marks being left in toilet bowls? They, when it, when it, when it, when it kills, it actually loosens oh. the growth of the side so it washes away. With their research complete, Richard and Dick are presenting their ideas to Shire's managing director, Ron Lassiter. Towards the rear, it sweeps up and it's very smooth down the back to give us basically a larger target when the man stands up. It's effectively a vestigial urinal. But this bowl here is rimless. There is no flushing rim at all. And what we then do is to put the flush itself into the seat. If this and as well as their innovative ideas, they also present their vision of the style the new loo should be. Form here. It's very slim across this axis down here, maybe quite broad across the back. We call this the, the Macintosh chair when we're sketching it because of this very, very long, slim form. Where do you find the, the, the difference between gimmicky and uh, uh, design? It's easy. Benefit. If there's a benefit to the consumer, it's not a gimmick. Pr that. Providing they're prepared to pay for it. Yeah. I, I think... I think there were some very positive ideas here, Alex, mm -hmm. weren't there? And really, it is purely a case of time, just at this moment in time, and that we just cannot drive them forward to a stage where we could perhaps integrate them into, into the inline suite uh, for, for next year. But Richard and Dick are convinced that there is time to do something radical. They invite Paul down to London to work with them on the design. In the studio, Dick and Paul work out how to include some of the innovative ideas into an overall slim design. A tiny bit of curve on that. It stops it looking quite so constructed. Yeah. You know? <coughs> and maybe do the same here. I mean, it would look great, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's really starting to work here. I, mean, I don't know, to my eye, that looks, I don't know, interesting, that looks modern, that mm. looks elegant, you know. It may be a bridge too far mm. for Shires, you know, mm. I can imagine Charles looking at that and saying, oh, I can't get my head around this Fabulous at all, you know. Yeah. Did you have any luck with the, um, the men's anti-P thing? Uh, it's been, it's drawn in, but I've not really mm. explored it in depth at the moment. I'm not sure how it would uh, run into the system. Technically, technically, if you cast a piece which is just your classic box rim in the, in the normal way, yeah? yeah? But it goes down there like that. So when it joins on the loom to make the completed thing, it's giving you that yeah. anti-splash thing. But I'd like by the end of the day to get to that. No problem? Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Good. Great. But the design still has to be approved by Charles. A week after his visit, Paul reports back. 
kind of evolve now a, a definite style that we can work around and maybe incorporate some of these things. Did, did you feel the brief has been changed slightly? To, to me, well, there's, a, there's a more modern yeah. feel to all of that. There isn't that sort of I must admit, hint of revival I that I was London, I did feel that the brief for. was changing, yeah. just from the initial discussions that we'd had with uh, Richard and Dick. And Alex is concerned that the design will be too complicated to manufacture reliably and might reduce output per man or lead to failures during firing. We look at a pot and say, well, how would we make a mould to, uh, to produce that? How would we design the mould? How would we spray it? How would we fire it? And these are the sort of things that we are thinking ahead to try and plan as to how we design the particular mould to make the pot. The pressure is mounting. Because of the time it takes to produce the toilet, there's now only a few weeks left to finalise the design. After discussions with Charles, Paul has had to modify the design of the toilet and the basin that will go with it. In a few hours, he will show the scale drawings to Richard and Dick and get Alex's reaction. Frankly, I'm concerned about, first of all, this area here, for example, this area will be prone to spreading with the weight, uh, the weight of the, the, the actual pot itself. It will spread and distort uh, depending So what happened to the male-female loo in the sorting process? We looked at the, the, the hump, so to speak, in the back of the, the urinal-type bowl and also the flushing toilet seat as well as the flush activating toilet seat. Uh, we actually think that, uh, that some of these are good ideas but technically at this moment in time I think they're fraught with danger and it's not something we would want to develop over a period of a year. We would want to obviously develop it from a manufacturing point of view as well as a technical point of view. What about the gents who, what were the problems with that? A male female lead. A male female lead. What was the, the immediate problems with that? Because I, I don't right. understand them. Um, a lot of it was really in the flushing function. Uh, to get the water up and round the rim again would require a lot of trials, a, a, a lot of different configurations, and again, time, uh, time is against us on this particular one. But that, again, was not discarded. That, again, is being looked at, uh, but not for this one. But we don't yet completely understand why it's being shoved further down the line. I think this male-female loo, in my mind, and I can't speak on behalf of the other guys here, was, was the best idea that's come out of, uh, of our discussions. I, 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 can, I can see the benefit, I, I think it would, it would look great. Um, it, it's really a question of, of time. It, it, we it doesn't matter how good it looks. There's just one other yeah. factor. Is that by the time this television program comes We realise that, yes. But, but we'll be, Anybody know, watching this program Richard, is going to know yeah, but Richard will, that idea. Richard will be a year ahead of them, though. Uh, <laughs> a year ahead at the rate at which you solve your problems at the moment. Are you, are you suggesting that we're slow? No, I'm saying that you're inflexible, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What I'm worried about when you say we must look at it, we will look at it, is I'm anxious that you're not going to look at it. it. The thing that really disappoints me, and it isn't what Paul's done, is how much of the things that we talked about before at the last uh, session, the ideas that we were generating, the thoughts that we were creating, um, have already, even at this stage, moved away from this. And how do I get the feeling, why do I get the feeling that they haven't just moved away, but that they're probably tumbling into a black hole and they're not actually going to be picked up at all? I think they tend to see things from a pure design point of view rather than taking a full commercial perspective of the problem. And I think this has been part of our difficulty, trying to see eye to eye from that point of view. The decision is made. Richard and Dick's ideas to make the toilet better get consigned to future development. It seems the new Shire's toilet will not have any of the radical features they suggested. 
But for Richard and Dick, this is far from the end of what's turning into the Battle of the Loo. Charles has moved on to the next stage of the design process, making full-size polystyrene models. He's made more changes to the style to make the toilet easier to manufacture, and now he just needs the board to rubber stamp the design. Then it will be straight into production. I would say it's 90% of the way there. We, we've got some more development. There's just finishing off touches that we really need to do. Um, but like I say, uh, our biggest enemy at the moment is time. My presentation later on this afternoon will be to the board um, for approval for production development. So this is an, an important stage. We have got to be certain that this is the right suite. Because we're coming very close now to the point of no return. Richard and Dick are not happy about the changes. They may have lost the battle for their innovative ideas, but they're determined to preserve the poised, tapering style. They have a plan. Like some coffee? Yes, please. Yeah. Starting off with the system still fairly high on there. We were quite square on the system and what we've done is we've rounded it all off. You've got this feature on the front of the system which is followed through on, onto the lid. The foot detail, it's the latest foot detail there. Um, a second recess on there just to give us that sort of almost classic column type of look to the, to the foot of the pan. So what do our friends think? We've got some other things to show you right. yet. Okay. So I think maybe we should have that discussion once you've seen those right. other things. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Richard and Dick have made their own foam models. This is the loo they believe shires should make. They're convinced that there are ways around the manufacturing problems if shires can be persuaded that it would be worth it. I've got the beginnings of the, of the um, urinal back with its inverse taper in here. The other thing to watch for from what Dick's been pointing out is the simplification of the form. It's become more elegant but there's less on it. There's less curly Q, there's less twisty turny, yet it's proportionally purer. You notice that straight away, actually, if you look from one to the other, especially around these rear sections. It's immediately apparent. Where the Shire's loo has an indentation in the side to help manufacturing, a smaller cistern and an overhanging cistern lid, Richard and Dick have kept the proportions of the tall cistern and the smooth back section. They're small differences, but to them, they're crucial. And they've kept the same tapering, poised look for the basin. Again, if you just look back between this model that we've produced and, and the others, you can see clearly how that's standing on its foot, whereas this one is balancing, like a ballet dancer. This is why many areas in your industry don't move forward, because you go, I oh, can't do it. And what are we getting anyway? Until you've got something in your mind that it really is desirable to try and solve the problem, then you will never want to solve the problem. We're not saying, make this and not this. We're simply saying, this is where we'd like to be. Now let's do whatever we can to get there. And we may have to accept in a short time something that isn't that, but it's 95% of that. Well, why can't we do this part now? A flush system lid. It is much cheaper to have a, 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 a rim, uh, an overhang on, on the, so on the system. it's not technical reasons whatsoever. No, 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 we can do that. We can do that. I think from a design point of view, there is such a significant difference between that mm. feel and the slimness um, than the where we are at the yeah. moment. Yeah. What you find in production, as, as things go through development rather, is that engineers typically make a change on a CAD system one day and another one two weeks later and another one four weeks later and they lose sight of the whole, and you can turn Cloudy Schiffer into Princess Anne. Just Not that there's anything wrong with Princess Anne. Anne. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty close to Cloudy Schiffer, and this one may have a little bit too much of Princess Anne at the moment. In a warm, cuddly, toilety sort of way. <coughs> there goes my OVA. <laughs> I think from our side, what I'd like to do is go through each of the shapes and just agree what we think we're going to do in terms of design improvement for the next stage.
It's a setback for Charles. Instead of the green light he was hoping for, he's now got several amendments to make. It's very easy to design something that looks very stunning, but if it doesn't sell, it really counts for nothing. You've come up with a suite which is uh, n no use to anybody, which makes no contribution to the company at all. With the backing of the board, Richard and Dick have managed to retain their stronger style concept. Now the only problem is to get production to make it, and in this they discover an unexpected convert. The Seymour Powell designs were so attractive that we, we set out to stick as close as we could to them. Their style sort of direct this towards, towards the, the, the end objective and that was, yes, we will be able to make it in spite of what you think. Fired by the designs, Alex and the production team tackle the manufacturing problems. After weeks of trial and error, they rediscover an old technique to cast the toilet bowl hollow which solves the problem of it being too top-heavy for firing. How the hell did you get that bit out from inside? I had to make those hollow because of the angle, the taper on there. Right. I couldn't form that by a back mould without incorporating further loose pieces. Have you ever done that before? Yes, I've done it previously. Yeah. Has this been a challenge? Challenge? It's been a real challenge. It's been a bloody headache in truth. But the narrow foot of the basin pedestal is causing real problems. After several failures, production have come up with their own solution. It's horrible what's happened to it. <laughs> what have you done to it? It's appalling, Charles. What has happened? It's lost all the purity. Yeah. What, I mean, why? What then? What's your reaction? Well, I made some samples of the original pedestal. It's a lovely pedestal. Which it's a very, very nice pedestal, but it's created several difficulties in manufacture. Right. We've had difficulty maintaining stability, we've had difficulty, difficulty moving it through the factory. Because it falls over on the trolley. It, we, we don't put it on the trolley, we have to ca carry every, everyone down by hand like a little baby. Right. Yeah? See, what? It, it, it's so, been so unstable as it stands that when we've come to spray it, the force of the glaze has even knocked it over. Right. Can we actually just create a wall that goes down here that sticks out rather than a yeah. solid form? Yeah. Yeah, we could create a wall there, that's exactly. Because I think if it was just a wall as well, that would help, you know, that ran all the way down. And, and, and also, for example, if we, we let this go around the top, as we've done on the basin, yeah. any wall we drop down, yeah. however small, yeah. will help that. You know. yeah. finally goes into full-scale production, Charles needs to make sure that people will want to buy it. He takes a new version of the models out for some market testing. He spends a day in three of his main retail showrooms, getting consumer reaction to the design. Excuse me. Good morning. Um, my name's Charles Kiriak, I'm the marketing manager of uh, Shires. If you'd like to follow me? Um, I'd like to know what your sort of initial views are on the design of that. It looks streamlined, yeah. Right. I like yeah. the shape, it's lovely, yeah. Does it appeal to you? The toilet doesn't, the toilet system doesn't. I like the toilet, it's all like compact and everything. The only thing I immediately jump to is, is should it be taller than the, the basin, the, the system? You know, I, I think something's got to go, either the basin comes up or the toilet drops down. Oh, that, that's interesting. Have you any idea what ish actually stands for? Something, uh, the S stands for sanitary wear or something. Or the H is some... Probably international sanitary wear. House of Plungen Bank. A few weeks later, Richard and Dick catch up with Charles at the toilet event of the year, the International Sanitary Wear Show in Frankfurt. 
people liked the general design of the product, mm -hmm. but what we did find was that the system was too high. Right. And uh, we, we took it was something like 30 or 40 millimeters of it. Right. And I went and did a second batch of research, and we found that the system was still too bloody high. So what I've done is I've taken a step to try and ensure that this will be a commercially viable suite. I have to say, the very thing that you've done, which is lowering the system, yeah. is one of the key things that would have made this fundamentally different from most of the things here. Yeah. Yeah. But you've, you've brought it back towards the more normal. You know, it's a small step rather than a big step. And finally, the first toilets start coming off the production line. For Alex, it's a moment of great pride. We've achieved something that science hasn't achieved before. We've stretched the modeling, we've, we've, we've stretched the spraying, we've stretched the casting, and at the end of it, we've come out with a suite, which is probably the best science has ever done. And the, 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 the biggest problem with that is how are we going to follow it? We've, you know, we've worked with uh, Dick and Richard and uh, they have had an influence. I find it very difficult to quantify what their influence was. But they did have a good positive influence. We've, we've felt that personally. But will it be a commercial success? At last, the new suite, called the Icon Suite, is ready to be launched. Tara, hi. Charles Kiriakou, how are you? It's Shire's most ambitious nice launch ever, well. taking 50 buyers and journalists on a day trip to Paris. It's a critical moment for Charles. What will Bathroom Journal, Heating and Plumbing Monthly and the Consumer Press think of it? ...and our sales force and set the brief. Design, it was to be a modern, classical suite with a hint of revival. Two of the world's top designers, and that's not an overstatement, Richard Seymour and Dick Powell, were invited to make their contribution to this product. We had our ideas, they had their ideas. There was mutual challenge and occasional disagreement. Remember, ultimately, we have to sell the suite. So, onto the product attributes of this suite. This suite will be a design leader. It possesses style. It has poise. It is elegant. A work of art a linear sculpture, the shape of things to come. I present to you the Icon Suite with Neo Brassware. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I should now like to invite you to view the suite. Thank you. Anybody buying um, this suite, I reckon, is going to get a pretty damn good product, generally speaking. You know, it looks pretty good. It's in the right price bracket. So many of the things, are, it's a little bit more expensive than it was intended to be, but basically it's where it should be. But what it hasn't got is it isn't a better loo. It isn't a better loo. It's a nicer looking loo but it hasn't got a lot of those smart ideas that we put in. And um, that, there would lie the disappointment for me, is that it hasn't actually moved forward in a way in which it could have done. In line, with, so it all looks like one piece. Concealed fittings on the back there. I think that looks brilliant. They could have gone even higher.